All right. So go ahead and write example one. How many of you Dodger Blues are going to win tonight? Yeah. You know if you lost your stand for saying that. Just kidding. All right, here we go. Example one. Let's do a few together. What if we had 2x on top, numerator in parentheses, over 3, all to the negative third power? That's a lot of stuff going on there. So I have a bunch of crap inside parentheses, all raised to some power. What I'm doing in my mind now is, let me look at my six or the seven rules from hour one. Out of these seven rules, what does it look like? Which one applies to here? Well, let's see. The seventh one. It has stuff in parentheses being divided, so I'm going to apply the seventh rule to the situation. It says, everything in parentheses I take to that power outside. Everything in parentheses I take to the power outside. So the numerator becomes to the fifth power, the denominator becomes to the fifth power. Let's do it. Watch this. So the 2 and the x I'm going to erase to the negative third power. Watch this. 2 to the negative third, x to the negative third, everything's going to be raised to the negative third power, over 3 to the negative third. Look at that. All I did right now is apply the seventh rule to the situation. That's all I did. Moving right along. Now what rule should I apply to the situation? What rule is that? What rule is that? The first, second, third, fourth, fifth, or sixth, seventh? Second. The second rule. Let's see. Which rule has to do with negative exponents? Oh, there it is, the second one. It says if you have a negative exponent, you reciprocate. Watch this. Let me bring this over here. When I look at 2 to the negative third, x to the negative third, what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate them out. All of this is really like this. Watch. If I could. If I can rewrite this expression, I can do it like this. I can separate it with three separate fractions. Watch this. 2 to the negative third over 1 times, let me talk, gentlemen, x to the negative third over 1. Notice how the numerator, I just rewrote it with the denominator of 1, like that. Look at And then the 3 to the negative third, I can write that as 1 over 3 to the negative third. Notice how this and this mean the same thing, because if I multiply it all out, it, it I get back to where I started from. So what do I do? I just separate them out, and now I'm going to use my negative exponent rule. It says if it has negative exponents, you reciprocate. So this becomes, I'm going I'm to flip it now, 1 over 2 to the third times, look at this, Reciprocate that. That's 1 over x to the third. Notice how the, the exponent turns positive once you do the reciprocal. And this one, I'm going to flip it too. This becomes 3 over, 3 to the third over 1. So I went from here, I separate it into a bunch of fractions, and I take the reciprocal of each fraction. That's all I did right here. Now let's multiply. Remember right. multiplying by fractions, just numerator times numerator times numerator. So let's see, 1 times 1 times 3 to the third is going to be 3 to the third. So that's a numerator. Denominator times denominator times denominator, that's going to be 2 to the third. X to the third at the bottom. Shortcut though. We're actually not done yet because I still got to go. I got to calculate three to the third power. <coughs> three to the third power means uh, doesn't mean three times three. It means three times three times three. Right. So I'm gonna put twenty-seven up here. And two to the third power means two times two times two. It's gonna be eight. X to the third power is X to the third power. Here's our final answer.
That was a lot of steps to get to the final answer. Now I'm going to give you the shortcut. These steps, as I was writing these steps down, I could see the fear in some of your eyes. They're like, what the heck's going on here? Especially when I took this and I, I separated it into a bunch of fractions. Let me show you the shortcut. Watch this. Let me rewrite the, the original problem. You don't have to write this down. Just pay attention. If you want to write this down, knock yourself out. But look at me. Let me rewrite example one. I'm going to rewrite this, this part of it. I took everything to the third power. Let me rewrite this part. Watch. 2 to the negative 3, x to the negative 3, over 3 to the negative 3. The shortcut is this. Whatever you see with a negative exponent, just move it across the fraction bar and make it positive. If it's at the bottom, move it to the top. If it's at the top, move it to the bottom and just make the exponent positive. Watch this. This has a negative exponent, so I'm going to move it across the fraction bar. Look at it. It becomes this. That has a negative exponent, I'm going to move it down to the fraction bar with a positive exponent. That has a negative exponent, so I'm going to move it down to the fraction bar. It just moves. Look at it. Here it is. Look at how this is the same as right here, what we just did. That's a, that's a shortcut. Whatever has a negative exponent, it just moves across the fraction bar. If it's on the bottom, it goes to the top. If it's on top, it goes to the bottom. And moves and changes the positive exponent. And of course, this became what? 47, right? Over 8x to the third. That's a shortcut. Whatever has a negative exponent moves. If it has a positive exponent, it stays put. By the way, 27 over 8, is there a common factor that fits into both that can simplify? No. No, you can leave it that way. If there was a number that fits into 27 and 8, then you'd use it to chop it down. Try example 2. Yes, 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 go ahead. Again, this was a shortcut. I did it twice. I did this problem twice. Here was a shortcut. This went to the bottom. This went to the top. X to the negative third went to the bottom with a positive 3. You see? That's the shortcut. Again, if you have your phone out, while I'm talking right now, you'll lose that step. Just a little FYI, don't, don't start arguing with you in the class. Don't want to hear it. Example two. Let's try 10y to the negative 3 power. 10y to the negative 3 power. Okay, first of all, what rule? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or 7 applies here. That's the first question you want to ask. Okay, out of the 7 rules, which one should I use? You say 5. Let's see what 5 looks like. 5 has to do with a power raised to a higher power. There's stuff in parentheses for sure, but there's nothing. There's no other power here except for 1. If you don't see a power here, that means they're actually a 1 power. So close, but something else. There's items being multiplied, and I'm taking it to a higher power. I'm looking for the rule that has items being multiplied in parentheses. It's going to be 6. Look at Look at 6 here. Look at rule number 6. I'm talking to gentlemen over here. Thanks. Yeah. I have items in parentheses. Look at 3 and 2. This one is uh, 10 and y. But there's still items in parentheses raised to a higher power, so I'm going to use that rule, which says uh, just take everything to the, the power outside. 3 to the fifth power, 2 to the fifth power. Let's do it. Watch. So I'll take the 10 to the negative 3 power, y to the negative 3 power. I just use rule 6 for rocking and rolling. Now, what rule? I got negative exponents, that's rule two. Rule two says, hey, you got negative exponents, reciprocal. Let's use my shortcut I just talked about. Remember to make anything in the fraction, put a one underneath it. 
Now, whatever has, remember the, the shortcut I just talked about said, on you with me? The shortcut I just talked about says, if it has a negative exponent, it just moves across the fraction bar and then make the, the exponent positive. Look at how ridiculous this is. This will go to the bottom, look at it. This will go to the bottom, look at that. And you can't just leave nothing on the, the numerator, so just put a one there. The one stays put, but one times anything is one, so I don't have to put the one. I don't have to put the one times all that, because one is always going to be there, so it's unnecessary. So what I do, I just reciprocate it, and I made the exponents positive. <coughs> we're, we're pretty much done. Hold up, hold up. Question. Uh, let's just simplify 10 to the third power. That's a number raised to the third power. Go to do it. Yeah, 10 times 10 is 100 times another 10 is 1,000. So I got 1 over. My final answer is 1 over that. 1 over. Thousand. Why the third? Rodovich, question. Oh. Yes, yeah, sir. After this, notes. So here I use rule seven first. Actually, rule six. Then I use rule two, the negative exponent rule. Questions? Let's try example three. You guys are doing good for Monday. Ignore that bell. Uh, up in the regular here. Here we go. X to the seventh times X to the ninth equals X to the seventh times X to the ninth. What rule are you using? Rule number one. Quick, quick. <laughs> So I got power times another power. The powers have the same base. Torres, what uh, rule is that? Angel Torres? Rule number three says, right, product of powers. You have the same base, you just add those exponents. We're rocking and rolling. Right, Verdusco? Look at this. Same base, just add the exponents. So it's going to be 9 to the, or x to the 16th power. We're done. That was easy. So this whole chapter is, I'll throw an expression at you, you just figure out what rules to use. Medina. Can you use the number for the computer? Uh, this one? Okay. You said you want me to leave it up here? <laughs> yeah. Is it coffee or what? Do you have a pencil? Yeah, okay. I'm oh, sure, go ahead. Wait, what does it say though? Like, so you get 16? Yeah, X is 16 power. So, okay. Are you making fun of my writing? Why not? Never mind. Hey, I'm confused though. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you want to get Here we go, here we go. It was just the third rule, Medina. Power to power. Actually, power times another power with the same base. The same basis was x, so all we do is add the exponents. I know. Sweet. I thought you were confused. <laughs> Here we go. x to the 20th power divided by x to the 20th power. Good try. All right, excuse me, I have the floor here. Thank you, gentlemen. Appreciate it. Go ahead, Thomas. I think he said something. Oh, okay. Fourth rule. Fourth rule says quotient of powers. Same base and you're dividing. Subtract those puppies. 
So it's going to be x to the 20 minus 20, right? So it'll be x to the 0 power. What's a to the 0 power? Right, let's look at our rules. It's the first rule. Look at 0 exponent. It's going to be 1. And I think V already saw that from the get-go. Whenever you have the same denominator and numerator, automatically you already know it's going to be 1. Whenever you have the same number on top and bottom, it's going to be 1. But now you can see what the rules of x was, why it is 1. Excuse me? Oh, you haven't seen nothing yet, man. This is only day one. Put your seatbelt on, man. Don't worry. Just stay with me. I'll take care of you. What happened to this go? Two more examples are done. Two more examples are done. Here we go. Example five. It's your notes. So thank you for reminding me. Um, your notes, you don't turn them, turn them into me, but you get to use them during assignments and tests. So you want to take notes that are very legible. Don't take them something you can read because you get to use them on tests. All my tests are open notes. So be aware of that. Here we go. Um, <coughs> X, Y over Z, 3, Z to the second power, and this is all to the negative 1 power. All kinds of stuff going on now. Okay. Well, the seventh rule? I love it. Beautiful, Nava. Look at the seventh rule. Simon, I'm talking. Thank you. Power of a quotient. There's stuff in parentheses being divided. Nava, Nava called it perfectly. So we're going to use the seventh rule that says, hey, look, everything in parentheses, take it to that negative one power. Let's do it. X, I'll take it to the negative one. Watch me. Y to the third, I'll take it to a negative one. But look at that's a power to another power. What rule is that? Power to power. Is that one, two, three, four, five, six, or seven? Can someone tell me? Okay, Y to the third is already the third power. Now I'm ready to another power. That's rule five. Power to power, you multiply those puppies. Three times negative one. Look at look at rule number five. Power to power. What do you do with the exponents? You multiply them. Look at six times three is eighteen. So let's go back over here. So let's multiply three times negative one. 3 times negative 1. Uh, what is 3 times negative 1? Thank you. Y to the negative 3 power. Check that out. Let's get that denominator now going. Z is raised to the second power now. Power to another power. So it'll be 2 to the negative 1 power. You got 2 times negative 1. So look at power to power. So you multiply those puppies. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Rock and rolling. Who likes rock and roll? Anybody like rock and roll here? What rule are you thinking of? I love it. I love it. Rule two has to do with negative exponents, right? Let's do it. You're right, Nava. Let me write my fraction bar. Remember the, the shortcut. Whatever has a negative exponent will move across the fraction bar and turn positive. So, this will go to the bottom with a positive 1 exponent. Are you kidding me? Look at that. The y will go to the bottom. Remember, we're reciprocating with a positive exponent. Z will go to the top with a positive exponent. We're rocking and rolling. By the way, we're professional mathematicians in Mugia's class, so... X to the first power is not as professional as just writing X because it's always automatically assumed to be the first power. If you don't see an exponent, it's always the first power. So let's be professional. Don't put something to the first power. It's automatically the first power. Done. So let's recap on this one. I used the seventh rule to get from here to here. Then I used the second rule to get from there to there. 
Every situation will involve different types of rules. Actually, you know what? To be more precise, I use the seventh and the fifth rule. Remember the power of the power? Second up. Right, seventh, fifth, and second. That sequence. And the, the assignments are for you to practice. So if you're not getting this, that's what the assignments are for. We'll practice together. I'll be doing problems on the board. Don't stress out too much. But do stress out a little bit because stress causes you to grow. People don't people who don't experience stress and learn how to deal with stress are the people who are weak. You have to learn how to deal with stress. That's what that's how you grow. It's like weight lifting energy, right? Ready? Example six. Last one. You guys are doing excellent. You guys are doing excellent. Last one for the day. Last last notes here, and then I'll give you the rest of the time to finish up assignment one or two. Oh, this is a good one right here. Nice. Y to the zero power, five to the negative three power, Z to the negative ten power. All right. Which one? Second. Because second involves negative exponents. I see negative exponents all over the place. Let's do that. Remember my shortcut with the second rule. Whatever has a negative exponent will move across a fraction bar. If it's on the bottom, it goes to the top, vice versa. So let me rewrite the fraction <coughs> bar. Does 13 have a negative exponent? 13 does have a negative exponent? Did this go with me? Does 13 have a negative exponent? The x does not, 13 doesn't. What is 13 raised to right now as we see it? It's raised to the first power. Let me talk about this. Go. Prince, real quick. Yeah, thank you. Real quick. Bonus, one more time. What is it raised to? 13? What is 13 raised to? I thought you said it. Who said it right now? Via. If you don't see an exponent next to a number or letter, it's automatic to the first power. So 13 is a positive one exponent. So 13 stays put. I don't move it. It stays on top. But the x to the negative fifth power does have a negative power, so it's going to move to the bottom. Watch this now. With a positive exponent. Remember, that's a shortcut. You reciprocate. What rule would this one be? Y to the zero. First one. Zero exponents. It becomes one. So times one. So I just transformed y to the zero power times one, which is really unnecessary, but we'll just do it anyway. How about the bottom now? That has a negative exponent, so it's going to go to the top. Watch this now. Five to the positive three. We're rocking and rolling. Z to the tenth. It goes to the top because it was on the bottom. Now let's just clean it up. It looks all messy and nasty. It's horrible. Let's just clean up the, the and we're done. Let's get the fraction. Uh, let's see. 13 times 1 times 5 to the third power. Let's just clean this up. Let's see. 5 to the third power is 5 times 5 times 5. That's 125. So 13 times 1 is 13. So I really have 13 times 125 on the top. Z to the tenth. All in the numerator. Right? Just took 5 to the third power is 125. Denominator is x to the fifth. Times five or thirteen times one twenty-five. Get my calc.
13. By the way, if you type in Google on your on your Google Chromebook, just type in online calculator. You got a nice calculator there. 13 times 125. I got 16,025 z to the 10th all over x to the 5th. We're done. Thirteen times that, came that. 